This is Bishop Coletta Vaughn, and this is Pentecost in a pandemic, <laughs> in a protest, in political uh, agitations, and yet the Lord has told us to get to the upper room, and that is our assignment, to get to the upper room. It doesn't matter what else that's going on. It doesn't uh, matter what else, it, uh, whether it's our technology, whether whatever it is, we know that we're tapping into something. We know that we are tapping in to something very, very powerful. And I, you know, I, I just thank God because it really doesn't matter to me which device we use or where we go. I know that we are fighting spiritual warfare. And one of the things that you will begin to recognize as you uh, move into the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you're going to realize more and more how warfare is going to be more prevalent. Because we have been tapping into the oil. Absolutely, Reggie. We're tapping into the oil. And this, I believe, is what uh, the enemy has not wanted the church to know. You know, for so long, the enemy has not wanted us to really know um, about these gifts. To really know about how these gifts work. And how these gifts can flow in your life. And how these gifts can bless the church. And how these gifts can bless people. Just ordinary people. That's what the enemy has not wanted us to know. He has not wanted us to move into the supernatural. He has not wanted us to move into the areas where the spirit of the Lord has a free reign. He's not wanted us to know that. You know, and I, I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> I, okay, I know that there's another dimension. I know that there is another space in the Lord where we are supposed to be moving. I, I know that. And so I believe that God has called me. I know he has called me and assigned me with this, get my church to Pentecost. Somebody say tapping the oil. Somebody say tapping oil. We are tapping the oil. We are tapping the oil. Glory to God. Father, we thank you this morning. And we give you all the glory and all the honor that you allow us to tap the oil in the name of Jesus. The oil of the spirit. The oil of joy. The oil of power. Mm. Woo, come out to Shekana. We're tapping into the oil now. We're going there. We we took some time to get through the elementary stages of this thing. But now, my beloved, we are tapping the oil. Now you're getting ready to see how the Spirit of the Lord, beyond tongues, is getting ready to flow to the ends of the earth. Remember the word of the Lord. That as you have seen COVID move to the ends of the earth. So shall you see my spirit. Glory to God. Bishop, we are tapping the oil. <laughs> you shall go, Shema. You shall get an oil. You shall see my spirit. He said to us, He said, I said I would pour out my spirit. I said that I would pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Did you think I was lying? I said, Well, no, Lord, I just never thought so. <laughs> California is on my God. That's that's a that's a great investment. Come on, baby. Thank you. Tag some other people. We are tapping the oil. We are tapping into the oil. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh God, He said, even as uh, the coronavirus has covered every space, every part of the earth, so shall my spirit be poured out upon. All flesh. Pastor Blocker. Pastor. Come on, y'all. Pastor Valerie. Let's go. Pastor Reginald. Let's go, Doc. Let's go, Janet. Let's go. We are tapping into the oil. And so when you begin, listen, this is a great lesson that we are learning and you're seeing demonstrated before your eyes. That when you start moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to experience warfare. Now watch this. I, I just need to tap this for just a moment. A lot of things that you may have experienced up until now 
was not really warfare. It was more or less distractions. And those distractions can be of such that it makes you think it's warfare. But it was just distractions. As you move in Holy Spirit, as you begin to walk in the Holy Spirit, and so many have joined us on the conference call. Thank you so much. You keep on coming in. God bless you. As you tap into the Holy Spirit, as you tap in to this dimension, my sweet sister, as we begin to move in this, you're going to experience real warfare. Up until this point, you've had some distractions. You may have even had some diversions. You may have experienced some derailment, some discouragement, but not genuine warfare. No. Genuine warfare happens when you begin to tap this oil. This is the oil. This is the, the dimension. This is the life of the believer that is walking in the spirit, led by the spirit. And, and I want to show you a scripture and you've heard it before, but before we get into the gifts, I, I just want to give you this because again, we have tapped into the oil, praise God. And, uh, <laughs> oh my God, it's going to be so worth it for you. It's going to be so, so worth it for you. And, and I was just, I was just thinking about this and I want you to go to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, as we are moving prophetically, and remember that we have received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. It is a prophetic spirit. He is prophetic because he tells us things to come. He always knows what is coming. He knows what is going to happen. He knows, he, he will, and Jesus says, he will get it from me and bring it to you. Ooh, glory to God. Ha, ha, yes, God. He will get it from Jesus, Holy Spirit, and he will bring it to you and make it known unto you. All right? So that's a prophetic spirit. He is prophetic. So when you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you are now developing your prayer life, when you're praying in the Holy Spirit even the more, you're praying in the Holy Spirit even the more, even the more, even the more. You're building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. Oh, God, I feel him in this place. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory, glory, glory. I'm telling you, folks, we tapped into something. Hallelujah. Come on, tag and share, tag and share. And, and as, as you begin to now move prophetically. As you began to discern more prophetically. As you began to operate more prophetically. You're going to tap into war. You're going to tap into the spirit world. Up until this point, you've just had some, 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 some distractions. You've had some derailments. You've had some things. But now you're going to tap in. You're going to tap in to real warfare. As you begin to move in prophetic discernment, as you begin, see this prophecy is bubbling all the time. God has a word all the time. God has a word. God is speaking all the time. So it's bubbling, bubbling. That's the neighbor that is bubbling all the time. And so you're going to begin to recognize that you're, you're more alert. You're going to begin to recognize that your hearing is sharper. You're going to begin to recognize these things as you move into this dimension. Remember, the baptism with the Holy Spirit is the gateway to the supernatural. And God is not the only spirit that's in the supernatural. So in the supernatural, you're going to encounter God. You're going to encounter more of God. You're going to encounter more of God. Of God's voice, more of God's wisdom, more of God's power. That's going to happen. But understand that when the gateway, the gateway of the supernatural, that God is not the only spirit that is in the supernatural. So now when you cross in, when you cross over this bridge, see, we want to be used of the Lord. We must 
have the gifts of the spirit in operation in the church again. But we also must understand that this is to give us the tools to deal with the, the opposing, if you will, factors, the opposing, the opposition, the demonic, the satanic, the warfare realm. So when we tap into the, the supernatural, we're not just tapping into God. You're going to tap in to the supernatural where there is opposition. There are opposers. So the baptism with the Holy Spirit is just the gateway into this supernatural dimension. That's why every person who has received Jesus Christ should Ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. But when we get over here. <laughs> woo, now you can't be tender. You can't be fragile. You can't be sensitive. You can't be getting your feelings hurt all the time. Because when you tap into this dimension of the supernatural. When you start operating in the gifts. When you start operating in prophecy. When you start operating in the word of knowledge. The word of wisdom. When you start operating in healing and deliverance, praise God. When you start operating in these giftings, you're going to encounter Satan more. You're going to encounter resistance more. You're going to encounter the things that you avoid. When you're on the other side of the gateway, you can avoid it. You can get 12 people to pray for you. <laughs> but when you get over here in the supernatural, when you start working and operating in this dimension, you're going to not just encounter God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, but you're going to encounter Lucifer. You're going to encounter Satan. You're going to encounter. You're going to. And so the, the, the whole point of the enemy is to keep us out of this dimension. So, so we don't know about the Holy Spirit. We don't know about the gifts. Uh, we don't know how to operate in them. There is no uh, context to nurture us and to develop them in us. So you have to understand the supernatural. You have to understand the texture of the supernatural. It's not just God over here. So it does not surprise me that now that we are tapping in, now that we are saying we're coming, no matter what, <laughs> we're coming, that you're going you're gonna to see resistance. You're going to see things fall apart. You're going to see that. So don't panic. That's when you start praying in tongues. That's when you start saying, no, 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 she can, no, no. and in that moment, Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. Amen. And this verse, watch this. Romans 8 and verse uh, 19. The whole earth is groaning in birth pains. I want you to look at this. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. You've heard this before. Watch this. For the creation was subjected to futility. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberation of the children of God. And we know that the whole creation groans with labor pains and birth pains until now. Not only that, but we who have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves, we're groaning. Wow. And we're waiting for the adoption and the redemption of our body. And that just moves me that the whole earth is groaning, waiting on the manifestations of the sons of God. That just moves me. Who are the sons of God? Those that are led by the spirit. Those that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And all of the earth is groaning. For this manifestation of this great and mighty people that will rise up, that will rise up and go beyond, go beyond their, their, their feelings, go beyond their, their hurts and their emotions. The, 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 the whole earth, look at, look at this pandemic. The whole earth is groaning. Hallelujah. But waiting on who? The manifestations of the sons of God. Waiting on those who are led by the Spirit. Waiting on those who have crossed over into the supernatural. Waiting for us. Because we carry the answer. Because we carry the prophecies. We carry the word of knowledge. 
We carry the gifts of faith. We will carry this. We will carry this. The whole earth is groaning for those that are led by the Spirit of God. Woo. The whole earth is groaning for those who are led by the Spirit. The whole earth is groaning, waiting on the manifestations of the sons of God. So that's why we're teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We carry, we carry what they need. We carry this. Remember, we are, we are surgical assistants to the Holy Spirit. We are professional. We are proficient. We will be uh, so precise and accurate in what Holy Spirit will want to do. Yeah, glory to God. So it's groaning. It's groaning. It's waiting for the sons of God. It's waiting for those who are the sons of God. Verse 14. For as many are led by the Spirit. Spirit of God, Romans 8, 14. These are the sons of God. Speaking to the maturity. Speaking to those who have been matured. Speaking to those that, that, that are not still hurting and broken and blaming and guilty. But there are those of us who will rise up in this hour full of the Holy Spirit. The sons of God. So the earth is groaning, waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Now, what will we do as sons of God? Come on. We will destroy the works of the devil. For this purpose was the son of God made manifest that he would what? Destroy the works of the devil. And so we who are like Christ are now the sons of God because we are led by the spirit of God. And the reason that we will be manifested is that we will what? Destroy the works of the devil. Glory to God. So the earth is groaning, waiting on the sons of God to be manifested. The antichrist. Those demonic forces that are lawless, that are not subject to the will of God, not subject to the spirit of God. They, they know we're coming. <laughs> they know we're coming. We're carrying the Holy Ghost. We're carrying the supernatural. We're carrying the oil. We're carrying the power. We're carrying the gifts and we're not afraid. To operate, and this is why I believe that the enemy has blocked so much revelation on the Holy Spirit. That the enemy has blocked so much revelation. It's not new, it's not new, it's just been blocked. It's just been blocked so that you and I and our generation would fall prey to this, this antichrist context we live in. This antichrist, don't get it twisted folks. This world is not friendly to us. This world, this is the antichrist. We are in the earth as sovereign witnesses of the authentic power, the yoke destroying power of almighty God. Don't fall prey to the context of our country. Don't fall prey to the culture. We are carrying the supernatural of God. So this is why I teach on the Holy Spirit so strongly. Because God is waiting on us to rise up and take his supernatural power to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians. Oh my God. We're going back to these gifts. <laughs> I'm not just talking about a bump and a shout, baby. I'm talking about real power. I'm talking about real, real power. I'm talking about real Pentecostal power. Oh, God, and I feel it already. Oh, yes, God, I feel it already. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, 
Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, say mommy, oh shy, yeah. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, ah, yeah, day. fall upon us afresh. Mm -hmm. Woo, fall upon us afresh. Hallelujah. Woo, God, we're carrying something. We're carrying the prophetic. We're carrying the gifts. We're carrying the supernatural. We are carrying this. We're carrying this, folks. And we are the, we are the agents that will infect others. The, the, the satellites, the outlets. Oh, glory to God. People will not be able to run into us and not receive something that let them know that they ran into the presence of God. A word, a healing, an encouragement. Open your mouth. Stop being uh, silent. Stop being an uh, introvert. Stop being... Uh, 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 a nervous person and I don't like people and I get rid of that. You don't need the power if you if you don't like people. You don't need this Holy Spirit like that if you're not going to use it to minister to people all through the day. I minister to the people all through the day. If you're with me, I'm talking, I'm sharing, I'm encouraging because I carry the power and I know that they're groaning. I know that the earth is groaning. I know that they're waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. And I am a son of God. How do you know? Because I'm led by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. This cannot be a religion for you. This has got to be a lifestyle. This has got to be a lifestyle. Where the Holy Spirit, where you live in the Spirit, you walk in the Spirit, you are led by the Spirit, it's your lifestyle. It is your lifestyle. You don't just speak in tongues, you heal the sick. You don't just speak in tongues, you prophesy. You don't just speak in tongues, you give the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. You don't just speak in tongues, you work miracles. You don't just speak in tongues. Come on now. You don't just speak in tongues. That was the gateway. But now you are a carrier. Remember the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit are resident in us when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They just have to be activated. You just have to be nurtured. You just have to be taught. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Concerning spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 12, I do not want you ignorant. I do not want you ignorant. Hallelujah. I do not want you ignorant. Oh, God, hallelujah. I do not want you ignorant. Glory to God. Glory to God, because the manifestation of the Spirit is given to profit others. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to profit others. Understand that. It's not given to profit you. It's given to profit others. Hallelujah. This is Pentecost. Oh, shit. And this move of the Holy Spirit for 2,000 years now. And now sometimes, you know, we're all, always the last one to catch up. Oh, but we catching up. Are we catching up? This is our lifestyle. I am a Pentecostal. Not because I joined a Pentecostal church. Not because I belong to a Pentecostal organization. I'm Pentecostal because I carry the power of the Holy Spirit. I carry the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not afraid. Mm -hmm. I'm not nervous. I carry the power of the Holy Ghost. I am Pentecostal. I am Pentecostal because I carry the power of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Woo! I am Pentecostal Woo! because I heal the sick. I am Pentecostal because I believe in the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. I am Pentecostal because I prophesy. I am Pentecostal because I carry the power of the Holy Ghost. I belong maybe to a Baptist church, but I'm Pentecostal. <laughs> I belong, come on here, to a Kojic church, but I'm Pentecostal. I belong to a Methodist church, but I'm Pentecostal. I belong to a non-denominational church, but I'm Pentecostal. Why are you Pentecostal? Because I carry the power of the Holy Spirit. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah forevermore. You got to get this. I carry the power of the Holy Spirit. 
I can't, I'm Pentecostal. Don't fool with me. Don't be around me sick. What? You sick? <laughs> Woo, God, some of your antennas ought to go up. You sick? What's wrong? <laughs> Come here. It ain't even, it ain't no questions. It ain't nothing. I don't even need the oil. I carry a little bottle of oil, but I don't even need it. Oh, I got a headache. Come here, baby. Come here. Come here. You got a headache? Yeah, I got my bad head. Come here. Come here. You ain't tell me nothing about it. I'm Pentecostal. I carry the power. I'm listening. I'm alert. I carry the power. And these giftings are to profit others. Oh, I just been having such a bad day. I just, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here to me. Come here. And the Lord would say unto me. See, now you begin to bubble up. Now you begin to prophesy to them. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom. And once you start opening your mouth, it'll just start coming out. Ooh, I'm alert. What did you say? Ooh, but the Lord was saying to you, mm, be not afraid. The Lord was saying to you, be not dismayed. The Lord was saying unto you on this day that he's turning things around for you. The Lord was saying unto thee on this day, be not discouraged. The Lord was saying unto thee this day, he's working things out for you. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take my hand, baby. As I pray for you, things are going to change. Your mindset's going to change in the name. Standing in the parking lot of the Myers. Stand in the parking lot of Walmart. It don't matter. I'm a Pentecostal. You can't just tell somebody that's a Pentecostal with power. You got a problem. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Let me prophesy unto you. Let me give you a word of the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I just, I, 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 I can walk in an elevator. Glory to God. And you're going to do it too. We're going to activate you. When the Spirit of the Lord gets all this information, we're going to activate the gift. And I, I, somebody was in the elevator the other day and they said, oh, my God. I said, how you doing? They said, well, you know, I said, hold it, hold it. Listen, honey, give me your hand. The Spirit, sometimes when you take them by the hand, it really activates that prophecy because now the Spirit of the Lord is making contact. But honey, I take you by your hand. I don't have to know you. I don't have to know your name, but I carry the power of the Holy Ghost. You're not going to be around me sick. You're not going to be around me discouraged and depressed. Listen, you're not going to be around me in sin. You're not going to be around me because I can smell it. Remember that the sensory of the prophetic what you see, what you hear, what you smell. Sometimes I feel a tingling in my ear. I'll turn around and say, who's, who's hurting up in here? Who's hurting? I, I hear something. Who, I don't need to know those people. They don't need to know me. They just need to know that a lady was on the elevator. Prayed for me and I got healed. That's it. You got to be spontaneous. That, that all this reserve stuff that you're trying to operate in and you know, uh, 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 all these professionals. Uh, listen, listen. When you carry the power of the Holy Spirit, sometimes that is conducive and sometimes it is not. Because you've got to move quickly. Sometimes an elevator ride is only two minutes. Sometimes it's less than a minute. You don't have long. So your, 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 your uh, discernment got to be sharp. And you got to be quick. You won't have time to be... Praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, I don't know if I should pray for you. No, you got to be spontaneous. You got to be responsive. You got to be listening and looking and smelling. Because you carry the power of the Holy Spirit. You are Pentecostal. Glory to God. It's, this is Don't make this more difficult than it is. Because it's not you. You are the surgeon assistant. You're not the surgeon. <laughs> You are the surgeon assistant. Holy Spirit is the surgeon. He's in you. You've received the baptism. You are overpassed beyond. You're in the gateway of the supernatural. Anything can happen, any place, any time, anywhere, because you are Pentecostal. <laughs> you might be on the elevator casting out a devil. You might be in the restroom at the airport casting out a devil. You are spontaneous. You prophesy every time, all the time, anytime. You don't care about an organ, a drum. You don't care about whether or not the praise team is sung. You are ready. You are loaded. You are caught and ready to shoot at all times. And you got to move. Because sometimes that's the only shot you're going to get. That's the only shot you're going to get. And you got to take the shot. Woo. So I'm telling you now, you on call. That's right. You on call at all times. 
Do you really want this? Do you really want to move in the gifts? Do you, do you really want to move in the gifts? Look here, I'm, some of y'all need three songs and you need the worship team. No, no, this is you operating, operating all the time, being led by the Spirit of God. So the gifts don't make sense to be activated in you. If you always got to go back home and pray about it, or if you always nervous, or your and let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is so shrewd. He'll have you to prophesy to somebody or pray for somebody that you don't necessarily get along with. He don't care nothing about none of that. <laughs> Whoa, I'm telling you, I'm sitting on the airplane. I'm trying to get a nap. I try to sleep. Praise God. Now you know nobody can sit next to you, but previously to this, I'm sitting on the, I'm not trying to make friends with nobody, okay? This is the best sleep I get on the plane. Holy Spirit, wake you up and say, to your left, pray for his right ear. What? Holy Spirit, you see me sleep and say, pray for his right ear. Okay, excuse me, sir. The Lord just spoke to me and said, I need to pray for your right ear. Is it all right? Sure, yes, ma'am. I pray for his right ear. In Jesus' name. And he says, wow, how did you know that? I said, I didn't know that. I was asleep. Holy Spirit woke me up and said, pray for your right ear. He said, I've been having a ringing in my right ear for like two years. I said, yeah, is the ringing gone now? He said, oh my God, it's gone. And I, he said, I hate to fly because the ringing is so bad sometimes. I said, is it ringing now, sir? He said, no, <laughs> it's not ringing. Oh my God. Who are you? I said, no, you don't need to know who I am. Just tell me at the end of the flight how you write your feelings. We land. I went back to sleep. I wake up. He says, ma'am, who are you? I said, I'm just a vessel full of Holy Ghost power. He said, oh, my God, my doctor is, I'm going to call my wife. My doctor is going to be so freaking shocked. I said, good, be blessed. I hope you know Jesus as your Savior. If you don't, he knows you. We walk off the plane. I never see the man. <laughs> the earth is groaning. The earth is groaning. Waiting on the manifestation. No organ. No praise team. No drums. No minstrel. Nobody to lead me in worship. But I'm led by the Spirit of God. I'm led by the Holy Ghost. That's it. Woke me up. I said, pray for his right ear. See, that's prophecy. Now, you got, I'm trying to get you introduced to how many different ways that this will happen in your life. I'm trying to get you introduced. Now, I get excited. <laughs> I get excited. I don't know about you, but I get excited when these gifts are working. Hallelujah. I get excited. I'm, 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 I'm walking, you know, through the, through the airport. Praise God. And the little woman is there with a child. And the child is uncontrollable. The Spirit of the Lord says, stop. I said, all right. <laughs> so I said, hi, mommy. I said, can I help you with the baby? She just so this. And she was a foreigner. This, this. And they were afraid. They'd been flying all night. And the child was just out of control. I said, it's okay. May I pray? She said, yes, yes. Now, Okay, so I pray. I said, devil, stop tormenting this child. In the mighty name of Jesus, stop tormenting this child. Now, Father, I thank you that this child will be at peace and restful for the rest of their journey until this mother gets this child home. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And the child is screaming at the top of his lungs. All of a sudden, just <laughs> and now the mother's crying. Now this guy comes. I'm assuming it's the father. He's standing and looking. The kid's been crying for hours. That was a demon tormenting that baby. See, the earth is groaning. The earth is groaning, waiting on the manifestations of the sons of God. I go to my gate. 
I don't know what happened after that. I'm trying to show you if you really want these gifts to operate, then you got to be available. It's not just going to happen like you think very systematically and very theologically. These gifts are going to be profitable at some of the oddest times and some of the most oddest places. And it's intentional to get you out of your comfort zone. Because when you're operating in the supernatural, you don't ever know where your presence is needed to correct something or to, to align something. Stop just thinking that it's going to be at the church or it's going to be behind the pulpit. I'm telling you, in the ladies' room, you guys, in the men's room, you young people, out on the basketball court, the spirit of the Lord is always bubbling. The, the bubbling of the bubbling up of the Holy Spirit. These gifts are given to profit. Look at First Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 7. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to profit. To profit others. You got to be, you got to be listening, you got to be alert. And prophecy, let me tell you something about prophecy. Prophecy will bubble up any time. You'll be in a meeting. You'll be on these Zooms. <laughs> you, you'll be doing things. And, and the bubbling up of the Holy Ghost will just start coming out of you. And it's not always a, a, a spiritual bubbling. It could be the wisdom for that situation. It could be the I want you to begin to notice how this works. How these gifts work. So the knowing gifts, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirit, they're already, they're there in you now. If you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they're there now. Holy Spirit is always speaking. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then you have the power gifts, the gift of faith, the gifts of healings and the working of miracles. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. Those are the doing gifts, the power gifts. Those are the gifts that, that stir things up. Then there's the speaking gifts, tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. Now, don't overstep the Holy Spirit. But be willing and ready to prophesy at all times. Be willing and ready. Because Holy Spirit is never quiet. He's like a faucet. He'll run all night. <laughs> He'll run all day if you don't shut it off. Ooh, somebody ought to hear what I just said. Holy Ghost is like a, he's like a faucet. I've never said that before. <laughs> he'll, he'll run all day. you turn a faucet on and walk off. And it'll run all day. Ooh, that's how prophecy will happen. Once you turn it on, it'll run all day. It'll run all night. situation when I was when my kids my girls were growing up and I was a young evangelist on the field and they would come and pick me up from the airport <laughs> they, would be, they would be nervous because I'm subject to preach I'm subject to prophesy I'm going to lay hands on somebody so we'd be walking from the gate that was in the days when but your family could come to the gate and get you that was before all of this TSA and SAT and all that BB all that and we have all that you go to the gate you come back to the gate and pick up your folks and we would come and so <laughs> we were going down to the baggage claim and I was on the escalator. I had my girls with me and, and I'm going to get my bags. <laughs> and I said, Woo! And, 
And so my, my one of them said, Mama, just turn it off. Just turn it off. I said, I can't. I can't turn it off. I can't turn it off. And 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 you know, the Bible said, if any two or three gathered, I'm looking at all these people. So I'm on the escalator. I just start, we're going down the escalator. I just start prophesying. <laughs> one of my kids just, just knelt down on the, on the stage. <laughs> Because it'll run all night. It'll run all day. It don't stop when the service ends. Hallelujah. Woo! The Holy Spirit, it don't stop. When you sing the benediction, the Holy Spirit run all day. He'll run all day. He'll talk all day. He'll heal all day. Yeah, he'll prophesy all day. Woo! Glory to God. And, and if you and if someone is around you, you ought to be that faucet. They ought, they ought to be able to get close to you and get wet by the Spirit of God. I'm telling you, the earth is groaning, waiting on these gifts, waiting on these manifestations. And while we're preaching good preaching, I amen for the good preaching. But we got to activate the power of the of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Hallelujah. And once it starts bubbling, once you get accustomed to how the spirit of the Lord will bubble up and use you. Oh, my God. You'll live for it. You'll wake up. Somebody said, how do you do it every morning? I said, I live for this. I wake up every morning and I don't, I don't need the alarm. Holy Spirit wakes me up. Sometimes my body is tired. Sometimes Holy Spirit, get up, get up. The bubbling, the faucet is running. The faucet is running. And I can't wait to get here to you. I can't wait to get into the class because the faucet is running. The faucet is running. And that's what I'm going to activate in your life is that your faucet is always running and the Spirit of the Lord is always bubbling in you and you're always ready to give a word in season. You're always ready to lay hands on the sick. You're always ready. My daughter's prophesied. My oldest girl, she's a she really has the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and she and she don't even, she can be trying to be funny, but it's God speaking. My younger daughter is 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 a is a pastor at heart, but prophetic, my sister prophetic, and it just bubbles. And once you allow it to bubble, it won't ever stop. Are you listening to me? Oh my God, it won't ever stop. And, 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 and people will begin to be drawn to you. People will begin to be drawn to you. They don't know why, but the, the groaning, that they're groaning, the earth is groaning, and the Spirit of the Lord will attract them to you because you're carrying what they need. Oh, Woo, glory to God. You are a prophetic people because you have the prophetic Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost will prophesy through you anytime, every time, all the time. You got to shut it down because he's bubbling all the time. Oh, oh, God. Why? Because it is sent to prophet. I'm not talking about you jumping and falling out. That's good. That's good. But I'm talking about now being profitable, being useful. I'm talking about now being in the flow of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about now being so profitable to God. Hallelujah. Can you imagine how this will look in another three or four years? When we come through this class, when we come through this Pentecost, when we come through this pandemic and we emerge, you'll sit around talking about, well, you know, I'm, that's just not me. Well, get, get, out the, get out the flow. Just go ahead on someplace else and be non-Pentecostal. But for those of you that want to be Pentecostal, I'm talking to you. Those of you that will not let your temperament stop you, will not let your personality stop you, Will not let your predisposition stop you. Will not let your proclivities and your human nature block you. I'm talking to you. I told Shabbabaya. I'm talking to those of you that want to be led by the Spirit of God. <laughs> Woo! I'm talking to those of you that's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to them that are lost. This is our gospel. That you would see our gospel in demonstration. That you would see the power of the Holy Spirit. Casting out devils. Healing the sick. This is our gospel. And if our gospel is veiled. If our gospel is here waiting on somebody to ordain you. 
waiting on some organization to verify, to validate. Oh, come on, somebody. Then you have veiled your gospel. You're veiling the gospel. You're holding back the gifts. You're trying to shut the faucet off of the Holy Spirit. And the earth is groaning, waiting on the manifestations of the sons of God. I didn't think I was embarrassing my children. I wasn't trying to embarrass them. I wasn't trying to embarrass anybody. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I just know that the faucet was running. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You waiting on a piece of paper so you can preach once a year? Really? You waiting on a uniform so you can preach maybe at the, at the big convention? Really? That's what you waiting on? Then why did you go to the upper room? Why did you receive the Holy Spirit? Why did you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? If you're going to let all of those other pieces stop you from reaching the people and meeting the needs of the people, then what are you waiting on? Why would you even bother the Holy Spirit? Just be saved, live a nice, saved life, and go to heaven. But if you have gone to the upper room and you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you have you have stepped into the supernatural. Oh, Hallelujah. Woo! I just feel God right now, man. I'm telling you. These gifts are to profit us. These gifts are to bless the people of God. These gifts are to move people toward the cross of Jesus Christ. These, these gifts are intended to preach. To teach, to reach, to draw, to attract people to Christ. Every other God speaks of their power. Every other God talks about what they are able to do. This is how we announce our God. We announce our God. When we go into a place, Jesus says, when I cast out devils, by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come in your midst. When you prophesy, when you break a bondage on someone's life, when you give that person hope and comfort, then the kingdom of God has come in their midst. When you get someone out of pain, when you lay hands on the sick and they begin to recover, then the kingdom of God has come in their midst. When you walk into a place and that place is confused, that situation is discombobulated, and the Lord will give you a word of knowledge or the Lord will give you a word of wisdom and you bring honor and you bring solution by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come in their midst. Oh my God. If you understand. How vital these gifts are. To the kingdom. Of God being manifest. That these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Validate. The ministry of Jesus Christ. These gifts of the Holy Spirit. Validate. That our God is supreme. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Validates. The ministry of Jesus Christ. The spirit of the Lord glorifies Jesus. And when you allow the spirit of God to operate through you. The spirit of the Lord is operating through you. Then the kingdom of God has come in their midst. When you are yielded to the spirit of God and these gifts operate in your life fluently, then the kingdom of God comes in that room, comes in that situation. The kingdom of God and his will now is done through you as it is done in heaven. When you understand 
Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He validates the ministry of Jesus Christ. He validates who Jesus is. He validates that you have been saved. He validates that you have met the Lord. He validates that through the operation of these giftings of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will glorify me. He will glorify me. Woo, glory to God. And this is why the enemy has blocked you and stuck you with tongues. Because he knows the earth has grown. Waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. Waiting on those who can resist the devil. Waiting on those who are unashamed of being Pentecostal. Waiting on those who will have a word in their mouth or sword in their hands. Waiting on those, glory to God, uh, that don't see anything too hard. That don't see any circumstance too difficult. Because if God, the Holy Ghost, raise God the Son from the dead, then he too will quicken your mortal body. The Holy Spirit validates. Validates who you are. Validates who I am. I don't, I don't have to worry about being afraid, but what if it don't come to pass? That's not my job. If I speak a word, as the Lord would give it to me, the Holy Spirit will validate. Holy Spirit will bring it to pass. It's not my job to run behind it. It's not your job. You are a vessel full of Holy Ghost power. And you've got a treasure in you. Ooh, oh my God. Ooh. Ooh, hallelujah. I feel the power of God in this place. <laughs> I want you to break out of your your corners and break out of your small spaces and break out of those things that have robbed you of the opportunities many times to be useful and profitable. I want you to let go of all of your excuses. I want you to let go of all of the things that you have used to cover up the fact that you have not been profitable. And let's start fresh. Let's start fresh with a fresh infilling, a fresh outpouring, a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to pastors. I'm talking to bishops, apostles. Mm -hmm. When we emerge up out of this, when we emerge from this, let's emerge with power. Let's release our people. Let's activate those that are in our care. Let's put the body to work. Let's put the body to work. Let's perfect the saints. Let's perfect the saints to do the work of the ministry. Let's not try to do this by ourselves. Let's go back and look at what we are forcing them to go through to become a minister. Is it relevant? Does it have power? While they're learning all of the rudiments, are they learning prophecy? Are they learning? Is that even a part of your catechism? Is that a part of your new members class? That they are introduced to the baptism with the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit? Let's reevaluate. Let's do this thing. The earth is growing. Let's start fresh. <laughs> oh, this has been so good. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we just thank you. Listen, today, I think it's the day we give. It's our day to sow a seed. Praise God. It's our day. It's the fifth day. Praise God. And this is the day that you sow a seed. Five. Five in the numbers of five. You can cash at me at dollar sign Carletta Vaughn. It's really easy. Or you go to my website at www dot go tell it dot org or you can just go paypal dot me forward slash go tell it ministry amen just cash app sow a seed 5 10 15 20 but in multiples of 5 50 500 5000 5 million it's fine but sow it in 5 550 for pentecost 5 the fifth day 
Praise God. Five, grace. Let us sow. Let's sow a seed. This has been a blessing to you, and I know it has. Put a seed, so put some seed in the ground. Oh my God, our time is up. <laughs> Woo, but remember, I'm a vessel full of Holy Ghost power. And I've got a treasure in me. I just keep hearing that song. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. www. Go tell it. Ministry, they'll put they'll post it. Dot o r g forward slash donate or just hit the donate button. Thank you, Bishop. Oh my God, dollar sign Corletta Vaughn. Mm. I'm telling you, or just PayPal dot me forward slash go tell it ministry. These are exciting times. Thank you, Nita. Woo, glory to God. Join me. Mm -hmm. Our next time is gonna be very very powerful. <laughs> And then, praise the Lord, Sunday mornings, go to our church page, Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost Cathedral of Detroit. Join me at 11 a.m. Praise God, we're there. Powerful worship. Our entire service is virtual as well as face-to-face, -face, so you can get a little bit more of me on Sundays. Praise God. And today, I want you to seize an opportunity. You go out. And I just want you to seize an opportunity to be used of the Lord. Amen. God bless you. I love you.